Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Christos vos Christos. Today's gospel is a gospel about believing, about faith. And the church is called Thomas Sunday. And we celebrate the faith of Thomas. In the modern culture, he's often, the emphasis is on his doubt. Right? They call him Doubting Thomas. But in the church, because we have the full context of the gospel, we see him as believing Thomas. Because of his beautiful profession of faith, my Lord and my God. But today's gospel is a beautiful uh, portrayal of an encounter with Christ. Something that hopefully each and every one of us has had in our own lives. Maybe we've been skeptical. Maybe we have been doubting. Maybe we're unsure. But we have this experience of Christ personally deep within us. And it's awakened our faith. It's given us joy and hope in the Savior. The old joke goes, Thomas is from Missouri, the show me state. He had to be shown, right? He wasn't present when Christ first appeared. And he saw all of the apostles radiant with joy, saying, we have seen the Lord. St. Francis of Assisi says, we have to give reasons for the spiritual joy that, was, that is within us. And in the case of the apostles, they didn't have to give the reason. They did. They proclaimed the risen Christ. But it's Christ himself who comes into their midst again on the eighth day. And that day is significant. Any of the details in the gospel you would think sometimes are maybe superfluous? When it comes to the eighth day, it's significant. The eighth day is definitely a week after the first day of the week, right? So it's chronological, but it's also theological because it's the day outside of time. Every time we gather for the Eucharist on Sundays, it really is the eighth day. It's the day outside of time when we're elevated into God's heavenly kingdom. The very first words we say from the holy tables, blessed is the kingdom, because we're elevated outside of time into sacred time, kairos, instead of chronos. And then the Lord comes and allows Thomas. He knows that he's doubting. He invites him, right? Put your finger into my hand. Put your hand into my side. The idea of having uh, an experience of Christ personally, I don't think gets any more uh, intimate than that, right? He's actually, you know, probing Christ's body to be able to have his doubts fade away. It says that he came into the place and the doors were locked. When we think of our own encounters with Christ, there are probably many parts of ourselves, especially those inner parts, that are locked and that are shackled. But Christ has the power to break through that. Even the hardness of heart, the hardest of hardness of heart, he can break through by his grace. We were just reflecting on that, my wife and I, as we were reading scripture together, how the word of God has that ability to break us open, that Christ still comes into locked rooms. He still comes through and is able to manifest himself in power and in light and in healing. So that's the gift of such an encounter that there's nothing that we cannot bring to Christ. And it's often in bringing to him our woundedness, our brokenness, our need for healing that he desires most to attend to. We don't have to be perfect. And sometimes the pursuit of per perfection itself is an idol that keeps us from closeness with God. It's in our own brokenness, it's knowing 
that we need Christ, that we're not our own saviors. That opens up that spiritual reality that allows Christ to manifest himself within us. When we're prideful and think we have it all together, very often God is at arm's length because we're reluctant to let him in. But Thomas has this intimate encounter with the Lord, and it's a model for each and every one of us to come to that point of belief. I love his summation, that little phrase, that little profession of faith, my Lord and my God. How powerful that is to acknowledge the Lord in our midst. One of the places where I use that same phrase in my own prayer is when I approach Holy Communion. There are so many Catholics in our day that don't believe that that's truly the body and blood of Christ. And so as an affirmation for myself, very often I will pray those words, my Lord and my God, to remind myself this is not mere ritual, this is not just habit, force of habit, but that I am encountering the same risen Christ that Thomas encountered in the upper room, each and every one of us is encountering every time we come before him to partake of him in the most holy sacrament, his precious body and blood poured out for us. The other thing that often happens is this time of year is you've had this wonderful experience of great and holy week. Maybe you came to the services and then you had a glorious Pascha. But how do you sustain that joy? Easter is not just a day, but it's a whole season. And it's by working on our relationship, just as Thomas must have, right? He came to that point of belief, but it didn't stop there. Each and every one of us that has had an encounter with the living God has to work at it, has to nurture that relationship, has to build upon that firm foundation of belief. And we do that through maintaining a life of prayer, by praying daily, by reading God's holy word, by attending the divine services, and allowing Christ to continually transform us the spiritual journey is not a one and done. It's a constant companioning with Christ. It's journeying with him so that we might be transformed by him. And that's the gift of this Easter season. It was during this time that all those who were baptized at the Easter vigil that died to their sinfulness arose with new life in Christ and we're garbed in white garments. That's why we still wear the white because of the baptismal neophytes that were newly illumined by the grace of the Holy Spirit. We wear white during the entire week after Pascha and then throughout the entire season to remind us of that Easter joy. So if you're feeling a little bit let down already, think about what's going on in your spiritual life. Are you spending time with the Lord in prayer? And allow him to restore unto you, to renew unto you the joy of your salvation, as it says in Psalm 50. It's not a matter of trying harder. Sometimes it's about a matter of letting go. It's about surrendering, just as Thomas needed to surrender and to assent to the Lord who was present in his midst. So we too must embrace that same sort of surrender and allow Christ to transform us just as he did. The rest of the story is Thomas becomes very much animated by the grace of the Holy Spirit. And he goes forward to be able to bring the gospel to foreign lands. The Christians from India today are still called Thomas Christians because of his work of evangelization in that territory. When St. John Chrysostom reflects on today's gospel, he really focuses on Christ's compassion to meet Thomas in his moment of need. And he says that the same Christ desires to encounter us in our deepest moments of need. So hold on to that good news. Grasp that. Don't let go of that. 
wherever you may be in terms of whatever you might be struggling with, the Lord wants to encounter you in a similar way with his loving kindness. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Christos vos Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen.